take those push pins out and open the door. Then as you get the door open, you'll notice you have a negative and positive. You see that is on the bottom of your side of your skid plate. And don't forget to fork out the forkers. And there it goes. You're just preventing it from spraying out just like any other sprayer. This is simple. Now, if you haven't replaced this sensor, it would be a good time to do that because this is what makes Eco Boom go boom. We're gonna go ahead and take this tube off now. In order to do so, we gotta clamp this clamp in, pull it all the way up. Now, you should be able to pull that right off. Now we got one more, which is this girl here. Yours will be white, mine is blue, just like that. Now this goes all the way to your valve cover. What you're gonna do, there's two pinch points on it. You pinch them in as hard as you can and pinch it back off and disconnect the connector on the back. And it does have a little part where the connector sits in. You just spread it open and bam, it's off. Now you have one more which is requires a fork to get it out. Take the fork, put it underneath it, and twist it out. There you go. For most of you guys, it's gonna be an aftermarket. If it's not aftermarket, then you can skip this part. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab my flathead here, and I'm just gonna get in there far enough to where I can get the clamp off. After you get the hose clamp off, you can go ahead and pull this girl out with this girl. Now, if you're thinking changing a turbo is easy, it's not. You have to take off a lot of things. And the next thing we're gonna take off is the charge pipe. Now, my charge pipe has a 10 millimeter. <clears throat> Pull her off. And once you get that side off, we're gonna go down there. Now we gotta take off all the boost line hoses that run onto the turbo. So you have one on your wastegate. Take that one off. That one comes off the wastegate. Now we have one under the turbo. This one's always the fun one because where it's positioned. Okay, there's the other one. And now you have one right here on the top of the turbo. Now that's all your boost lines. Now we are pretty much getting closer to taking off the lines. We gotta take off the heat shield and the downpipe to the turbo. I need to take off the coolant hose that's on the top of the radiator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hose clamp off the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and get onto the bottom one now. Now we got it off and it's on the hose over here. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of twisting to get it to come off. You have to keep in mind it's been on the car since it was new. Pop her off and that is disgusting. You're gonna go ahead and take a ratchet with a T30. And there's gonna be a T30 down here that we have to take off on the bottom of the heat shield. Then you're gonna take a 13 millimeter. It doesn't matter if you have a long ratchet or a short ratchet, just make sure you have a long enough extension to get yourself in here. And the two bolts we're gonna hit are the two top ones on top of the turbo. Now, these do bend back. So don't be afraid to bend it to get it out. After you bend it all weird and stupidly, it should look something like that. Put that off to the side. Now we have access to the turbo. And we're gonna go ahead and get the 10 millimeter to get the lines off. Your coolant lines have to come off. Your oil feed has to come off. And the bottom of the turbo where your drain feed is needs to come off. And then we can start taking off the flange and the rest of the two bolts that hold the turbo onto the head. All right, now we're gonna start taking off the feeds. So we're gonna start off with the oil feed. This one's an eight millimeter socket. Got to go on the bottom of the wastegate for this one. 
Now your last one underneath, that one's a 10 millimeter to get the oil drain tube off. Get on the bottom. And this one's the tough one. So make sure that you're pulling the right line off. Now what you're gonna do is make sure that you don't mess this up. Pull the drain out. And you're gonna pull the coolant feed out. And then you're gonna go ahead and pull your oil feed off. Now, before you put all those back on, make sure that you inspect each gasket on them. Make sure they're not torn or ripped or anything like that. The best way to get these guys back on is lubricate them with some type of oil. So that way you don't crack them or break them. This is the worst place you want that to happen. This does feed coolant to your turbo and cools it down. So if it breaks, bye bye turbo. And you will cry. All right now we gotta get the, the weight off from the mount. That's the weight to the mount. Next, you're gonna take a 13 millimeter. That was a 10 mil. Now we're moving on to 13. Taking the nuts from the turbo. Now you have the flange, which I did the liberty of taking one off because that one's a pain in the butt. You gotta lift the car up and you gotta take it off. But we will take this one off. Now we're gonna take a 15 millimeter socket, deep obviously, because these are studs. I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, nut from the flange, the last one anyways. Now at this point, we should be ready to pull the turbo out. What you're gonna do, wiggle the downpipe off, take your gasket, I have two on there, because I found out that having two stops the leaks and it really does work. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna drag the turbo off from the, the studs and wiggle her out and bring her out. Ordinary to release the fuel pressure, we have to refer to another guide. And this guide is taking the fuel pump out of the back seat. Now basically you have two little locks that stick in your back seat, one there, and then you have one over here, and those two locks come out, you pull the seat out, and you have access to your fuel pump lids. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your fingernails underneath one and pull up on it. Now at this point, you have the power cable that's connected to the pump. You wanna go ahead and just press the middle in and pull it out. And then you have the hose that is connected to the top of the fuel tank and this has a metal retainer on it and you're just going to push those metal retainers up and then there's a little button on the side and be really gentle with this guys because this is plastic make sure you have towels around because this will spill fuel, fuel out of this hose right here when you go ahead and press that button there and go ahead and pull it up and now you're going to go ahead and pull the hose off and like i said fuel will come out so it's always good to have towels and wipe up the access fuel now we got to tap off the ring now this is the dangerous part so make sure you get all the fuel around the ring clear you're gonna have to remove your fuel pump noise retainer and your vacuum pump noise retainer which is right here and that's pretty easy you just push them out. We are about to remove the fuel pump hose, which is connected to your high pressure fuel pump and pull up on the blue tab. The same thing like every other one, push in, pull the tab in and gently pull it out. 
and it will leak a little bit of fuel. Take off the connector to the fuel pump, and that's easy. Just push it in and pull it up. We need to take off this line now, and I will get the wrench for that. We'll be right back.